Welcome to this curtain raiser press conference on the eve of the 12th National Conference of Aid Society of India, ASICON 2019, which is being held in Tamil Nadu for the first time and being held in Chennai also for the first time. And the conference begins tomorrow and will be there on for three days, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. And the theme of the conference as is there on the background, <coughs> excuse me, is collaborate, consolidate, and conquer. And we will hear presently, what do we have to consolidate, collaborate, and conquer? Uh, our pan panel of experts today are Dr. Kishwar Gilada, who's sitting in the center, President of Aid Society of India, President of ASICON 2019, and a member, a governing council member of the International Aid Society. To his uh, right, uh, that will be his left, is uh, Dr. Susan Swindells, who is Professor, Department of Internal Medicine, University of Nebraska Medical Center, USA. And to his right is Dr. N. Kumarasamy. All of you must be very familiar with him. He is from Chennai. He's Secretary General of Aid Society of India and co-chair of ASICON 2019. He is chief and director of Infectious Disease Medical Center, Voluntary Health Services Hospital, Chennai. And now over to you, Dr. Gilada. Uh, as you, you all know, that Aid Society of India, which is the body of professional doctors and researchers in HIV care, started in 2000. But we started our national conferences only in 2005. The first one was held in Delhi. After that, it was a four years gap. In 2009, it was held in Jaipur. And from that time till today, it is regularly every year. So from 2009, we went to Hyderabad 2010. From Hyderabad, we went to 2011 in uh, Lucknow, 2012 in Mumbai, 13 in Kolkata, 14 in Bangalore, 15, 16, both in Bombay, uh, 17 in Hyderabad, 18 in Bangalore, and 19 in uh, Chennai. The philosophy of not organizing conferences in Mumbai and Chennai was because a lot of work has been already done in those two cities. A lot of activities are being held, regular CMEs, updates, symposium. We wanted to cover the rest of the country because it's a national conference. And then when we call national, it has to rotate all over the country. So initial years, we try to do north and south, north and south. But whenever we have gone to north, the response to the conference was poor. And whenever it was held in the south, whether it's Hyderabad or Bangalore or Mumbai or now in Chennai, the response is good. Because HIV has been more concentrated in the southern states. Uh, initial uh, Andhra Pradesh, now divided into Telangana and Andhra Pradesh, they are number one and number two, followed by Karnataka, followed by Maharashtra, followed by Tamil Nadu. And in the northeastern state, Manipur and Nagaland. So these are the seven states which have high rate of HIV. So the response to HIV is also higher here. Uh, doctors involved or researchers involved for HIV care, they're also higher here. And we also depend on resources to organize meetings and conferences. So whenever we have gone to the north, our resources were poorer because the uh, pharma companies or the sponsors who were supporting, they used to say that we have to carry lock stock barrel from here to the north. And we spend more for output is less. So we would like to concentrate only in the south. Now in the south, if you organize, then if we leave away Mumbai and Chennai, then there are only two cities left, uh, Hyderabad and uh, Bangalore. Now the other issue is the HIV work is done uh, in all other uh, medical profession or practice. It is 50-50 or 60-40 kind of ratio between government and private. But in HIV, almost 80 to 90% work is in the government setup and 10 to 20% is in the private setup. So we have to also look at the participation of government setups, ART centers, national AIDS control organization. If you talk about real partnership, expecting them to contribute for funds, we may not get anything. So we decided that we will co uh, concentrate on uh, mutual partnership, uh, leaving aside the funding. The moment we ask funding in government setup, they will say no, and they will not even talk to us. So we never approach any government agency for funding. We just go for partnership with them. And it is technical partnership. Like whenever they need our support, we are available free of charge. And when we are in need or when we feel that they should participate in the conferences, they are participating. So past three, four years, 
the participation from government agency has increased whether it's a national aids control organization or central tb region through revised national tb control program or rntcp similarly icmr setups initially uh, department of biotechnology used to also participate but now they realize biotechnology has nothing much to do because original research is not done in india uh, what is india currently known abroad is that though we have not made a single molecule for hiv treatment of our own we don't have any single patent but we have been able to make those uh, product available at pittance of the cost which is 1 to 2% of international cost 100% bioequivalents and currently covering 92% of the people living with hiv aids all over the world so the india's biggest contribution to the rest of the world particularly those which are poorer countries of africa or latin america is that we are able to reach reach out to them and their hiv positive people at very low cost so that is our largest strength second strength in india is our clinical acumen like indian clinicians are doing wonderfully well in western countries also uh, one of the top tax payers in us also are indian uh, medical practitioners so what is important in medical uh, indian medical practice is that we look at clinical symptoms rather than symptomology or signs or clinical examination rather than only at lab now whole world depends on proof uh, what is the proof of lab whether the cd4 count is how much whether viral load is how much we see whether there are oral thrush whether there is clinical signs with the tb there is a breathlessness so india has profiled in that so uh, indian physicians have played a great role in training doctors in south africa lot of african countries so these two things and on the other field we are in it so we have been not only a, a liability to the world because india is number 3 in hiv prevalence uh, in hiv numbers so if you talk about south africa then nigeria then india and india with 2.1 or 2.2 million people but 2.2 million in 1.25 billion people so percentage wise we are less but in real numbers we are contributing big numbers but on the other hand we are assets rather than liability because we are able to meet 92% of the world's hiv medicine supply and it 92% so this uh, strength of india has been now understood globally and whatever new guidelines are coming whether it is from un aids or who or cdc etc or uh, pepfar program of government of us they are all banking on india because if suppose they have to buy medicine from patent donor companies they can support x number of people but if you buy medicine from india they can support 100x people so they are taking also indian medicine into account and secondly though we are not made any patent we combine medicines in such a way like we have been treating tuberculosis so four medicine in one tablet four cocks or uh, fixed drug combination or four fd this is not done abroad because their patent owner companies are different and they cannot come to understanding so easily so you combine your product your product and make one tablet is very difficult for india we are copycats we copy x y z and we can make uh, x y z copy to you and in that india has made so many uh, fdcs or three in one or four in one combination that rest of the world copied from us and now they combined their companies and they made it made that copy uh, copies of our combinations so basically we have uh, asset in providing medicine at cheaper cost we have asset in providing combinations and asset in providing good medical care so this kind of things we would like to put to the rest of the world during international meetings but what we would like to put to our nation in india is that hiv is no more a killer hiv is no more a very serious ghastly dying disease the people with hiv is surviving and that survival is almost full life so today if god comes and says ask somebody that in my one hand there is a diabetes on the other hand there is a hiv you have to take one disease you smilingly take hiv diabetes today is more dangerous than hiv so that has been happened because of the low cost of medicine affordable uh, uh, non toxic medicines and easy to take medicine so this is the asset of india this kind of conferences will make people understand in larger or through you people and through our medical professionals that you are dealing with a disease which is manageable chronic and complete full life is given and not even single transmission can occur from even husband to wife if you provide treatment and treat them for 3 months they become undetectable initially it was only undetectable but now it is also target not detected so in 3 months medicine 
if somebody is HIV positive with lakhs of viruses per ml of blood, within three months that person is T and D target not detected. If target not detected or undetectable is untransmittable. So no transmission to spouse. If spouse is infected, no transmission to the child, no transmission to other partners. So this, this is a great achievement which a medical profession has seen in the field of HIV. You have so many diseases, but such kind of fast research has not been done in any other profession. Now, my colleague, uh, Dr. Kumara Swami, who has been a chair, uh, who has been a uh, local chair, he will put uh, his point of view and how we strengthen this conference, what kind of contents are there in the conference, what kind of people are there, including our international faculty. Come on. Right. Thank you, Dr. Gilada. So, you heard about, you know, about the background of this conference and what's happening here. Right. So, so today, a lot had been achieved in the field of uh, HIV in the last uh, 20 years, two decades. 20 years back, we used to treat patients, you know, people used to die in our hands. You know, it was like uh, HIV disease was almost like a death sentence. It is not there anymore. Today, people with HIV, they live like a normal people like us with the same lifespan. That is because a lot had been done in the last 20 years, two decades. A lot of research had happened in terms of prevention, in terms of treatment, newer therapies, newer diagnostic tools and everything. So in this ACCON, Aid Society of India conference, every year what we do is, so we educate the doctors, policymakers, researchers, and as well as young doctors who are in the process of getting involved in HIV. Talk to them about what is new in HIV, especially in the terms of diagnosis, finding, uh, you know, any type of complications they have, how to diagnose, how to prevent them, how to manage them. Also, talk about the newer treatment. There are a lot of new therapies available. HIV treatment is very different from other uh, treatment what we have seen in the past, where they use the same old drugs for years and years. But in HIV, there are a lot of new drugs coming up. Every six months, there are a lot of some new treatment, uh, you know, is coming up. So our doctors need to be continuously trained and should be taught on this, how they can prescribe newer drugs to our patients and also identify side effects and other complications on this. So in this ACCON, we bring the best faculty from internationally. You know, even for this ACCON 2019 here in Chennai, we have some of the best outstanding international faculty as well as our national faculty here. So in the next three days, they'll be talking to our Indian doctors about what is new how they can uh, you know learn from this conference uh, to do a better patient care and also do a sorry? Uh, we expect around uh, 350 to 450 doctors from throughout india throughout india they'll be attending the conference but our faculty will be from throughout the world this is a national conference of course we also have other doctors from other countries also but in fact we are doctors from usa coming as delegates coming from africa coming as delegates even from our neighboring countries, but predominantly our Indian doctors from throughout India, not only from Chennai and South India, from throughout they have been coming up. So here with this faculty, they'll be able to learn what is new in terms of for managing patients, preventing certain um, complications they'll develop, as well as they'll know about some of the newer drugs and also how they can prevent the disease. Because in this conference, not only doctors who treat people, but also doctors who are involved in the public health program to prevent the disease also you know, participate. So they also learn how they can learn from this conference to do better prevention efforts in the public health program. We have people come both from the government and as well as from the private sector and also from the NGO sectors attending this conference. So it's a three-day conference starting from tomorrow, Friday, November 22nd and ends on Sunday, 24th. And uh, this conference is, uh, happens every year, we do that. And we make sure that people who attend this uh, conference, they learn what is the latest, what is the best they can do to our patients. As Dr. Gilada said, today, HIV disease is yet another chronic manageable disease. It's better than many other diseases like diabetes and other complicated diseases. Today, my patient, when they come, I tell them, take these drugs, you can eat anything you want. But in my neighboring department of diabetics, department they'll say you can't eat this you can't eat that now my patient they eat everything they're perfectly fine nobody falls sick anymore with these newer therapies that is because the indian companies were able to manufacture this at an affordable cost to all our patients so again even if you don't discover our own molecules in india but we are able to collaborate with many innovative companies 
from the US and Europe and from the West and develop the molecule here in India to give this to Indian patients as well as to a lot of other developing countries like in Africa. You go most of the countries they procure the Indian drug because it's the only thing affordable. It works very well, same like the innovator drugs and also prevents death, prevents infections. Maybe now I'll request uh, Dr. Sue. Thank who's you. a well-renowned uh, HIV and TB researcher who's also developing a lot of new molecules for HIV. And who, she will be talking to us in this conference, you know, probably about the, your views uh, to the media. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, my particular interest is in HIV and tuberculosis, and they occur a lot together in the uh, the same people, which is difficult. So as well as many people in India with HIV, there's very many people with tuberculosis in India. And so if you have both HIV and tuberculosis, that makes uh, a lot of things more complicated. Also, if you have HIV, you're more at risk for tuberculosis. You know, somebody coughs on you, you're more likely to get tuberculosis and um, become ill from it. And it's another area which has been slow to develop new drugs and new diagnostics, but it's, it is finally happening. And so we do have new medicines, we have some new diagnostics which work better. And I think going with the theme of the conference, this is a good uh, area where collaboration is key between the HIV program and the TB program to work together and manage the patients together. This is something that, because the programs grew up separately, they don't always uh, interact as much as they can. So I think a collaboration there is very important. This is also another area, as Dr. Gladys says, where Indian um, drug manufacturers have also made a big difference in co-formulating the TB drugs so that people have to take you know, much less of them even with some of the newer drugs. Which, so I, living in America where I do, I, I can't get access to these because the drugs are, have uh, patent laws and branding. So actually what you have is better, you know, for some of them. And so, um, and the other thing that I thought was interesting isn't really HIV related, but I've al always thought that Indi Indian doctors are so well-trained. And this is, goes outside just HIV, but uh, I trained in England in 1970 something, graduate finished in 1976. And so similar educational style to what, what's seen here, I'm based on the clinical skills. So now I practice in the US and the students I teach in America, they have none of this. They just, all they want to do is order a CAT scan. And then that tells them what they want. And I say to them, you know, uh, when they come tell me about a patient, is this patient um, really ill? Are you worried about them? You know, uh, and they have no idea. I mean, it's just, you've seen this, right? Anyway, so uh, the newer HIV therapies that I will be talking about in the next couple of days, which I think are interesting, even though, um, as Dr. Kumar says, you know, we have tablets that are easy to take. Sometimes people don't like to take tablets forever. With HIV, you have to take them forever. It's not 10 days, it's not three months, it's every day. And so people get sick of this. And so there are uh, company, companies in the US have developed long acting injection treatment where you get an injection every month, every other month, and then you don't have to take the tablets. And people really like it. And so they've done some studies which are looking good and they've applied for approval from the US FDA, which I think they will get. And I think these injections will be available to us in the US at the beginning of next year. And so that's going to be a very different option for people. And I think it'd be interesting to talk about how that might apply in India and whether there'd be the same interest and what would be the issues in terms of access to these long acting injections. So. Anything about the TB newer therapies, uh, which are involved in some of the trials to prevent TB? Yes, so we uh, that's been the area of the so, most progress. So TB is the most common problem in HIV infected yeah. people. You know? So yeah. there's a most, not only in India, but also Africa and many countries. Yeah. 
So now we have got a lot of new TB therapies coming up as well as prevention treatment. Somebody who has HIV, if they take it, won't acquire TB. So Dr. Swindells have developed some of those uh, you know, treatment protocols. So, so you know, yes, yeah, so worldwide, the number one infectious killer of, you know, overall is tuberculosis and the, the, in, the disease that kills more people with HIV than anything else in the world is TB. So, um, uh, yes, almost a million people every year with um, HIV and TB. So the area that Kumar is talking about that I'm interested in is prevention of TB. And so there are courses of treatment you can take to, if you're at risk, if, to prevent TB. And it used to be you had to take it six months, nine months. And again, people got tired of doing that. So it got shorter. Now we have a three month regimen and with uh, some colleagues uh, around the world, I have worked on a, a regimen which is only one month. So you just take medicine every day for one month and then you don't get TB. So this has been a big advance that we're excited about. So we'll be talking about that too. So in the meeting, Tamil Nadu, out of the 450 people, maybe around, uh, we'll have uh, Tamil Nadu, maybe around 75 for registration. Yeah, yeah. Around 75? 70, 75. General medicine uh, treatment doctors, skin doctors, dermatologists. And ART officers. ART medical officers. Three days. Different, different, different. Placing the other. Uh, if a NAC National AIDS Control Organization or a head or other, Mr. Alok Saxena. Alok Saxena. I think you are a Nipa, Tanya, who presented the tan cycle. So, our brother, upon the International AIDS Society order, next president, president elect, on the period, Dr. Adiban, on Malaysia. Um, International Aid Society. Adiba Kamal Lusan. Adiba Kamal Lusan. Yeah. Now we're going to spell it like that. Kamal Lusan. Zaman. Kamal Lusan. Kamal Lusan. International Aid Society is the next president. So president elected in Zulong. He's coming. 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 India is country head. His name is Dr. Bilali Kamara. Bilali Kamara. Bilali Kamara. Kamara, C A M A R A. Yes, WHO Where over state Tamil Nadu state, Andhra state, Angola national program, both HIV program and TB program both doctors and program managers are all coming. All are coming. Only that presentation, discussions debates case presentation plenary talk. And there are discussions over the questions and doubts. So, in the ACCON 2019, here is the Dr. Sundel Sunangala, the newer treatment. So, every day, we have to do the same thing. So, we have to do the same thing. 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 So, that's the discussion. We have a talk about new Marandalan contributors under development. So, Dr. Baba Femino, the antiretroviral drug, is a newer type of molecules, the antibodies. That's the injection. That's the HIV control. That's the HIV control. That's the HIV control. So, in even the HIV irukavangalukku variety and other problem varla tb varla hepatitis b varla hepatitis c irukalam adha tb undu sir illa ellarku irukonum irukalam so adha petti nariya discussions indala naanga pandrom then vand hiv irukavangalukku nariya ve nariya naal avanga uyiroda irupanga na so then then they live long so because of anti retroviral drugs adanal they may develop other problem like diabetes lot of other non communicable diseases 
ஸோ அதை பற்றியும் நிறைய டிஸ்கஷன்ஸ் பண்ணதுக்கு இங்கே பண்ணுறோம் ஸோ இது மாதிரி வெரைட்டியான ஹெச்ஐவி ரிலேட்டட் ஃபோக்கஸ் வந்து டிஸ்கஷன் இருக்கும் பிரான்ஸ் நாட்டிலேருந்து ஒரு டாக்டர் வந்திருக்கார் அவர் வந்து கியூரப் பற்றி பேசுவார் இட்ஸ் அ ஃப்ரெஞ்ச் சயின்டிஸ்டியா இஸ் கோயிங் டு டாக் அபவுட் வாட் இஸ் அ நியூ திங்ஸ் அண்டர் டெவலப் இன்னைக்கு வரைக்கும் கியூர் இல்லை ஹெச்ஐவிக்கு கியூர் இல்லை பட் அது ஒரு நியூயர் தெரப்பீஸ் அண்டர் டெவலப்மெண்ட் அதை பற்றி இஸ் கோயிங் டு டாக் மோர் ஆன் தட் டூ பாயிண்ட் ஒன் மில்லியன் பீப்புள் இதான் வந்து நம்ம நேஷனல் டிசம்பர் ஒன்னா தேதி Dense, Manipur and Nagaland in numbers. But none of these states is without HIV. So everywhere it is there. Everywhere. But in the north it is not. Yeah. Yeah, in the HIV is the back to South Africa. South Africa is the number one. Number one. And number two, Nigeria. Number By three. 1 million, 3.9 million. 3.9 million. Nigeria? Nigeria, 3.9. India 2.1. India yeah. and Kenya almost. Yeah. <clears throat> What is important is for next two days, three days, you should come, uh, cover people who are researchers from abroad, uh, talk to them in detail, what is happening. Also, our young people, they are going to present uh, their presentations in oral and there is a poster session also. So, what is happening in India, that will be through this poster and oral sessions. And how... people are working together from both government and this thing that, that should give direction for next couple of years because india has uh, uh, in tuberculosis rather than eradicating tuberculosis by 2030 india said we will eradicate by 2025 so only 6 years are remaining similarly for hiv we are saying 100% people with hiv should know their status 100 people person uh, who know their status should be on art and 100% should be virally suppressed so that means no new infection that is called zero infection that should happen by 2030 so this 2030 both for hiv and tuberculosis is very important and for tb we have advanced that to 2025 we already also have a another target of 1990 by 2020 for which only one year is remaining and we are far way behind from that 1990 1990 target how your government of india has moved very fast in the last few years and earlier viral load was not done for all patients so now they have tied up with uh, one private concern and doing viral load for every hiv positive person but still uh, it is done only for 10% or 15% people they need to expand their viral load doing capacity by 10 times more so there are some challenges so we are offering all our assistance technical assistance to naco national aids control organization and what naco has done from this time which was never done earlier is that all naco training programs every program they will have two representative from asi to assist them so they are going to have 20 training program out of which one is already held in delhi last week and one is in kolkata next week after that there are 18 programs so at every program there are two minimum two people from asi so they also government of india also understood the importance of experts from asi because our expert from asi they have been slogging for many years for two decades three decades like me and kumar swami are there from beginning of the epidemic so the uh, knowledge of what we gain if we go abroad we are paid consultancy fee and travel for india we don't we are not going to charge anything this is our country our people and that they understood so they are now incorporating with us so earlier it was we we were walking one mile extra two mile extra giving our hand but now the hand is hand and that is a very good theme we we chose this time that we would definitely conquer hiv there are hurdles there are shortcomings but uh, if there are no shortcomings it's so easy then experts are not needed then anybody can do it so experts are needed only when there is there are challenges and something will be difficult so i think you should spend next 3 days uh, along with people delegate international speaker india speaker you write critic if something is shortfall with us you write that also because you see 
only if you you are a mirror of the society you you criticize that program is failing or program is something lacking here no problem we, we are happy with that and when you pinpoint something things will change the parliament is in session assemblies are in session people will ask question what what are you doing with this kind of money see uh, uh, about 15 20 years before our entire national aids control program was foreign dependent foreign dependent is foreign money dependent last 10 years they have started reducing now today it is entirely run on our own coffers yes uh, and we, we used to say we used to criticize government of india saying that on one hand you say we are super power we want to be part of uh, 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 big seven countries big eight countries you are going on mars on the other hand you are with a begging ball you help us help us for india for what we are at a such a position that we should help other people which are much more below us and that's what is government of india doing they have offered billions of worth uh, medicine to africa a uh, lot of people do not know government of india is providing them free medicine from india not only for hiv for tb or many medicine that so is. that's what india should do every year yeah every year yeah. so today indian program is run on its own on its own coffer number 2 india is providing 92% medicine uh, 92% of the world required supply for antiretroviral therapy is from india and number 3 all these combinations you will never find any company anywhere in the world maybe billions of dollars worth like indian companies that everything is on platter you, you don't like this combination you have another combination you have another combination you have kidney problem you have another combination you have this problem you have another combination so all the things are one single medicine so what is simple disease to treat you know patient come we do the test within 4 hours patient is back with simple medicine take in the night and sleep and within a month or 15 days is back to work so we don't want people to lie down in hospitals don't want to be sick don't want to leave their uh, earnings don't want to uh, should not infect their wives or spouses and children so all these things is possible in india and therefore if something wrong is happening in government we also criticize them we say them that you, now you are running a program on our coffers your coffer means my taxpayer money i'm paying for the taxes on which you are running the program so they now started listening earlier it was money is coming from abroad going somewhere who was bothered are you paying why you are talking like this they used to tell we said no we don't need foreign money we should run the program on our own and you will find that even this whole conference though it is a five star deluxe hotel we are running on our own coffers no foreign money all all are coming from our indian pharma or uh, whatever registration fees you getting so that is the strength of the country and that's what we should go for and uh, we would like to help africa we would like to help those countries even in asia which are in uh, not very good shape uh, in as vis-a-vis uh, -vis hiv treatment like indonesia or uh, uh, malaysia they don't have all these combinations they all depend on india and earlier you know the scenario uh, i talking about 2005 i went to angola i went to the pharmacy and as the medicine oh this is from india no 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 this is coming from brazil i said this company is from india hyderabad the medicine is going from hyderabad to delhi delhi to brazil brazil coming to angola and they saying there is a brazilian medicine because they don't speak english and uh, therefore uh, the things have changed now we understand the strength of india we are uh, trying to get those people here we are going there now you go to any of the african countries not only for hiv for any medicine they consider india as like anything so because so. otherwise africa could have been wiped out yeah you know, the 30% you can imagine every third person in uh, some of the countries in africa was hiv positive every third person so every family will lose one two one two three people and they lost lot of people like that now nobody is going to lose yeah in india there are a lot of good things that happen in terms of things the only major issue we face with our national program with the government popular program is implementation our implementation plans are much delayed not systematically done you know it's poorly planned i can give an example for example today we have got a newer therapy for hiv treatment this is just a single tablet with no side effects the latest one with a combination called dolutegravir that's d o l u t e g r a v i r d o l u t e g r a v i r right it's not a combination it's one tablet it's got in two more tablets will be added so this is a powerful combination which is manufactured in india it's going to africa where there is preferred as a preferred drug what are the guidelines 
and us already long back for five years back they moved to that and many european countries but in india even in the national program manufactured in india is not uh, being given to our uh, government hospitals it's because of our policy now they take time to implement that but in the private sector they are already been received people who have got the money they can pay for it and do last two years so in india there are a lot of good thing happening like this we have got a good brains and good technology and development but the implementation is uh, you know very slow i won't say it's not happening very slow it's not happening today it will happen after two years but what will happen is in this two years our patients will have access to bad drugs they develop a lot of side effects they develop a resistance or they won't take the drugs they will become sick of that because of side effects and if they develop resistant they'll transmit the resistance to other people same thing like we have got antibiotic resistance and tb resistance but we have got better drugs so that implementation is very slow so in a conference like this jccon we also debate that why it is not implemented we put in the opposite people from the government this is yeah so for this jccon 2019 we are uh, going to have one debate especially before a sexual act if somebody takes a tablet we can prevent hiv which is called prep pre exposure prophylaxis science already shows is proven and uh, the researchers who did the research are going to be here tonight and tomorrow they're going to give a talk on that and but still our national government has not implemented that so we are going to debate why it is not implemented so we have speakers for that to talk about both on the government as well as on the private to science to change policy same thing with the dolit agrawar we did a debate last year in our national conference desi con last year in bangalore So till now it is not implemented. Now we are going to follow with that with the program manager. No, but now so the effect of the debate is government has discussed that very seriously. Very seriously. They started procuring yeah. in a couple of months. It will be implemented. Be there. So when we do this conference, we talk about science. Also, we advocate uh, scientifically to our policymakers. We don't fight. We don't make a dharma. We are not against it. No, we but we do scientifically advocate. Why? Why we are we are interested in the patient care. We don't give the best treatment. finally we doctors are going to suffer they are going to come to more side effects more work for us to take care of them so if you give a better drug they are going to be better with this so so it's easier for us to manage them so we are interested in a better patient care so we you know sometimes program managers they may not understand them. so they may not they are not from this field so they are all a transferable position from different different they have their own limitations and they don't don't have access to sometimes the latest information so in a conference like this we bring them give the latest information stick to them over there in a way we advocate make sure that they do it and we follow with them we have changed policy the last 20 years we have made lot of change policy in our town starting treatment immediately doing uh, viral loads and preventing certain diseases and new bringing in newer treatment in all those we have done but things happen slowly you know still we advocate but uh, right now there is <coughs> Shortage of first line antiretroviral therapy in Tamil Nadu. They are not facing a lack of medicines majorly because of which the uh, persons with HIV who are on this drug regimen yep. are not getting are not getting. Yeah, yeah, maybe I can do that. It's what is called stockouts. Mm-hmm. So we said earlier all these medicines are manufactured in India. Ninety-two yeah. percent. Before just you walked in, we are discussing that ninety-two percent of the whole world's medication in a developing country manufactured in India. it goes to africa it goes to thailand to entire south america and lot of places but you saw this in our national media i know that you know you people came and all bombarded me on the day you know on the second no so so this is what is called stock out right so this stock out happens not because of any shortage in from the companies it's because of the poor planning by your program managers so for example today if i'm running a program i need to forecast how many people are already affected how much drugs they need because these are the drugs not like a malaria pill three day pill or a typhoid treatment or one pill it's a lifelong treat so we need to project how much is drug and also there are a lot of new people getting infected so you have to add to them also in a sustainable to do that so if that type of uh, planning is not needed then you will see the stockouts this had happened this stockouts have happened not only in hiv historically in india they have happened in lot of other diseases so i am not an expert in other diseases to talk about this but uh, Policy implementation. Where is the major lacking? I think good program plan. You know, so we have good uh, people there in developing guidelines. Mm-hmm. There are people who involved in procurement of the drug. People who are involved in approving the finance and everything. Mm-hmm. All have to work together. 
there is one uh, link is gone, then you'll see this type of stocks. I'll give you an example. You know, what happens is, and they decide ART center. They said a state-wise ART center, city-wise ART center. And in some places, ART center is blocked by 10,000 people. And some remote places, ART center is only 100 people, whole month. So what they will do is they will put supply to every place. So at some place in uh, Chennai or Mumbai or Pune, they are busy centers. There is a supply is also there, but suddenly some more new patient came, supply is short. And they already have dumb medicine in other places where it is lying there. So they put in one year supply, in one year they are not getting so many patients. So they start moving that medicine from there to here. The me me medicine from there, the ART officers will say, no, 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 I won't give. It is required for me for next one year. So they hold on. The moment the medicine goes in government setup, they won't leave. And here there's a shortage. And they there, leave, uh, just to, uh, analyze the ART center are make run sure, under. Make sure they need the medication. Right? Now, if, if, for example, I have excess drug, if I give it to another center, to your center, I may run out of stock. Mm -hmm. I have no guarantee that they, somebody is going to replace it to me. Right? So this is because of those supply chain. You know, there is supply a, chain. There is a deep supply chain management. Supply chain. And the second issue was, which now being tackled, which we learned from South Africa, is that differentiated medical care. Differentiated medical care is such that in HIV positive patients, once they are on treatment, many of them are not sick. Many of them are quite healthy. They are busy. Now you are expecting them to come every month for medication. is useless. So we, we made two different streams. Those which are healthy, steady, they don't need medical uh, intervention so much. You come every two months, every three months. Those which are sick, you come often every month, every two months, and we'll check you. So doctor's time, which is there uh, required for 10,000 patients, is reduced to only 1,000 patients. And other 9,000 9, patients are taking two months, three months medicine. So earlier, the government set up, they are not listening to us. But we said, you look at South Africa. How South Africa, there's one ART center in South Africa, has one lakh patients. They have developed a robotic pharmacy, yeah. uh, where ro robo comes and gives uh, medicine, uh, the prescription is read. And then Robo comes and gives medicine. So I said we should learn from. Yes. Yeah, the India, yeah, the and the <laughs> Robo was operated by a pharmacist from here, from Andhra Pradesh, <laughs> and who studied in Chennai. In fact, even an is young son is a unit. Pradesh, so right. that they are uh, here so to program. Is, so what yeah. government of India has listened to that? Chennai, now they made uh, you in some center they are giving every two months. In some center they are giving every three months. How many? Uh, just wanted to ask you how many ART centers? There are one thousand fifty-four ART centers all over the country. India. And how many like, you know, in every district? Uh, like I, th I think now they have enough, yeah. enough uh, ART centers. There are total 500 plus districts. So some district, at least one ART center there per district. But some district, they have two or three, four also. We have a, we have a good coverage. Oh. Only thing, you know, the operational activities of the ART centers, you know, where yeah. patients yeah, come in. Sorry, 1,500. Yeah, districts, oh, no, five, no. 1,054. <laughs> or you can take 1,100. In India, so, 1100 ART centers, centers by the government providing medicine to 1.1 million people. 11 lakh people. 11 lakh. So, it's a major flaw here is uh, the operational ability. You know, this is because of the stigma. People don't want to go there, they'll stop the medicines. So, are people like uh, still coming forward or yet to uh, like approaching the ART centers? Have you seen yeah, still the stigma is there. You know, HIV is still a stigmatized disease, but it changed a lot. Because the, the stigma years. is in HIV is not due to its uh, initial dying um, situation. Stigma is linked to sex. Indian society is double standard society, like carpet. Above the carpet, very clean. Below the carpet, fine dust, don't talk, hushes. So if HIV was not related to sex, it would have been quite open. Would have seen heroes, heroines, or ministers coming out openly and saying that, yes, I have HIV, no problem. But people would start uh, diabetes center or cancer center in the name of their father. Have you heard of anybody starting HIV center in the name of son or daughter? No. Because there's stigma linked to sex. And unfortunately or fortunately, 95%, 96% of the HIV transmission is through sex. So even if somebody gets from blood transfusion or something else, he will be or she will be seen as he's got sexual transmission. And uh, sex, the same um, uh, sex can produce child and that is called good news. And the same sex produces HIV is called bad news. So these connotations will not go away so easily from our society, maybe for the next two, three generations. Similar stigmas are there for tuberculosis and leprosy, but they are contagion stigma. 
like somebody is having uh, uh, tuberculosis, that means we will come and we'll get tuberculosis. So they don't want TB patient. So MDR uh, in India, hardly any private hospital would like to uh, admit MDR TB patient. And the leprosy stigma is because of contagion of touch. You will touch, I'll get leprosy. So these three different stigmas are three different ways. And the stigma related to sex will not go away. The only thing has reduced because now HIV positive person is not seen as HIV positive. He is like any you, me, sitting in uh, uh, in Western countries where or in Africa where they got Kaposis, you can see oh, his Kaposis is HIV. In India, that is not there. Kaposis is very rare. Okay, but a lot had changed over a period of years. You know, 20, 25 years back, even when I treat a patient, people look over, oh, this guy treats AIDS patients. You know, where you know people look at you. was for us. Everybody, even not only for patients. Many of my staff, their family members used to say, "You are working in a place like that. I didn't have that because my father was also a doctor. You know, so we had that all those. Uh, you know, but some of my staff, they say they don't even tell their uh, their home that where they are working. You know, that type of uh, stigma. Now it's changed a lot. This are possible because today HIV infected people live like a normal people. So we have treatment available, better treatment available, and also they don't transmit. So now, as part of this conference, we also carry the message: HIV infected people live like a normal people. They don't transmit infection to others. They are widely suppressed. I think this type of information we make the doctors to carry to the public. That is important to remove the stigma. I think at this time, I think we should hear from Dr. Swindells how do you change the stigma in the United States. Might the media might be interested. I know in 1980, you you know this was like a bad. Thing. We have the same issue. You know, we don't have so much tuberculosis, but there's still a lot of stigma with that. People think it's a dirty disease. You know, this house is dirty and you've done something wrong. And so it's, uh, the, I think the one thing that we had more in the US than some other countries is the activists, you know, the community, like the ACT UP and the Treatment Action Group and this. Yeah. Um, mostly young gay men and they just spoke up and they weren't afraid and they demanded um, change. And uh, I think that's been very helpful. And there's, some of that I see in Africa and um, in India, you know, you have community groups yeah, yeah. and community right. involvement, but it was a little bit slower to develop and maybe that will help Absolutely. promote change too, because a lot of it comes from within the community, don't you think? Yeah. Similarly, so, you know, we are learning from that and it's happening, but again, in India, being a very orthodox, uh, you know, Indian yeah. society, you know, over the conference, as you rightly said. Yeah. So still, you know, that type of activist getting into the general community, you know, takes time. Yeah. Yeah. What is the observation rate of <clears throat> HIV in the community? What is the observation rate? So I'll tell you, you know, when we started our work, you know, I started practicing from 1993 onwards. Uh, in fact, the, one of the first cases were uh, diagnosed in uh, Tamil Nadu state. So, we used to be number two next to my pastor. So HIV is so high here. Everybody, even when I go to Delhi for some meetings, even for some internal medicine, they say, but Chennai, you're coming from HIV, everywhere <laughs> HIV, you know, that type of 96, 97, 90, you know, that type of, you're from my AIDS capital, right? So now if you say the Tamil Nadu state, we are contained epidemic. So we have, we have done a lot of work in the last uh, uh, two decades in terms of prevention program awareness and also making hospitals start managing them changing their uh, attitudes and all those and because of all those together now HIV has come down to your question now we have the latest number from our Tamil Nadu national program there is a decline in HIV incidence there is new infections and also sorry I, I, I come here we have the Tamil Nadu AIDS control so, 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 so they are all here in a tank sex no, no, but still, there is a very good decline in Mumbai, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu. They are done very well. And even mortality, the death rate in Tamil Nadu state, they have already done the analysis, has come down. So, with all those, but still a stigma disease. A lot of people are all not acceptable by the family. You know, people find the stigma to go to the uh, doctor. Even when they come to our clinics, they come keep a, wear a cap and sit there you know, on our paper newspaper and read us if they want to line, line by line. You know, this all happens. You see, uh, some stigmas are created by us. I'll tell you, we call ART center. What is ART center? Anybody will Google say ART means HIV. So do you say we want to reduce stigma, but you're calling that patient is going to ART center. So you have to change the name and the nomenclature. My clinic is called Unison Medicare, but everybody knows this is HIV clinic. Now we change it to HIV and infectious disease clinic. A minister coming to my clinic will say, oh, can you come and see me somewhere in my home or in some hotel? 
So no, I don't go anywhere. Yeah. You come. So what do I say? You say your driver has uh, some problem, or you have hepatitis B, or you have some infectious disease, or your so or your wife has some problem. You say that. You don't say HIV. Suddenly they come here and oh, you, he's also there. I said, don't worry. He's also same. You are also same. So that way the stigma reduces. But that initial hesitation is there. The stigma is not only for HIV. It is also for treating a physician like us, like uh, with uh, 20, 30 years of uh, professional service. We should have been appointed as a physician to president of India. Nobody will appoint us. The president doesn't have HIV. Why they have appointed Dr. Gilada or Dr. Kumar Swami? So the stigma is attached to us also. And that stigma will not go away so easy. That will take time. We need to change nomenclature of ERT clinics. We need to even change name of uh, clinics and societies and approach. So government is working on how you can integrate with the mainstream. So ah. they are in the process of working on removing this uh, separate program, how you can be integrated. integrated. But there is good and bad. Good thing is the stigma sometimes get integrated. But bad thing is maybe HIV can be ignored. HIV is a smaller thing. We have got only 0.3% of the Indian population is infected. But if you say diabetes, in South India is 22% of those people of more than 40 years have been diabetic. So it's a, so people, what the program managers say today, they come, APEC, they'll say, oh, diabetes is a major problem, move all the funding to this, you know, AIDS is only this much. So that is a bad thing. So good and bad can happen. So, and what has initially happened, Government of India gave a lot of importance to HIV. They created a Department of AIDS Control, DSE. In, in charge, secretary was put in. So there was a Department of Health was separate, Family Welfare was separate, AIDS was separate. And our over enthusiastic officer said, we control HIV in a very nice way. Suddenly they stopped that department, removed the secretary, moved to the health department, and then additional secretary level position was given to NACO. After two years, they realized that HIV is also controlled. So that additional secretary sits mainly in Nirman Bhavan, hardly once in a week comes to NACO. So that importance gets down. And that, as he said, importance goes to department which have how much fund. So whether ministry or secretary or anybody, they are saying, oh, this is a higher fund department. We should be so in Maharashtra they call Malaydar department, where there is a more creep. It is neglected. So sometimes we should not be over enthusiastic to also say that we are controlled. We are controlled. We are doing well. It is on the uh, path of being controlled. The moment you say you are done, your job is done. So a lot of prevention programs were stopped in last two three years, four years, because the prevention fund is uh, removed. HIV is not a very important program. Uh, intervention projects were stopped. Sex workers intervention, MSM intervention, hardly they are getting any fund. More money has been moved to treatment and uh, uh, anti uh, treatment and virus uh, load testing. Hardly anything for prevention. So when we move to the next stages of program, we cannot ignore the first stages. There are people who still need a lot of support. Uh, there are vulnerable population, vulnerable communities, high risk behavior population. They have not been yet been reached. The people who are manual labor. You're doing all uh, creative program in daytime. Daytime they're working, they will not attend your program. Uh, night you are not able to reach because every organization also has their own regulation. You'll work 10 to 8, 10 to 5, 10 to 6. So how do you reach such vulnerable population? So those kind of intervention projects also should have been given importance continuously. That has been reduced. And uh, that's the reason we are going to still find so many people which are infected, not yet knowing their status, they will still have to dig down. So today to your question about HIV, you know, whether going down or up. Now people who have identified who have got HIV, a lot of intervention had been done on them. We have counseled them about safe sex, put them on treatment. Today we have science shows, if they take the treatment, if the virus is undetectable, they will not transmit infection to others, right? So that means they will not transmit infection to others. But there are still large number of people living in India without knowing their HIV status. They have high virus level. And they are already transmitting infection to others. So they will continue to transmit to others unless you find them, test them, diagnose that they have HIV, put them on treatment. So today, the major challenge, which we'll be discussing a lot tomorrow, is how you identify this population, what is called hidden population, <laughs> or, or key population. One such population is uh, young MSM, gay people, which you all know that now there are a lot of news coming up around, uh, even in the higher socioeconomic status people, and injecting drug use and a lot of migrants in our country, migrant workers. If you see this, you know, go around, we have people coming from Bihar, uh, living here, away from the family, on the roadside, doing things. And the most of, uh, you know, odd jobs you are doing in Chennai, there are people either from uh, Bihar, uh, Northeast, okay. and uh, UP, and we don't, the Tamilians don't work, they don't do anymore. 
even our all over me sans and they like no no they forget kumar sami says that they do so so when they have been out of their families you know it's a, yeah you know everybody needs sex supper so it's a behavior so they have been out from them they find no chavi and very hard to reach them this is another hidden population migrant who is going to test them where they have access to them today six months they are here another six months they are in another district and they keep transmitting infections so we need to identify yes, some online questions yeah i no you please finish yeah. what you are saying then yeah. so so i think unless we identify everybody who are high risk for hiv put them on treatment identify it's very hard to contain hiv same thing now united states is working on do you want to tell what proportion of people are already identified they have hiv in the us yeah um the the estimate of all the people in the us that have hiv only 22% are not aware of it so that's what was in india so like, us data no. and that way, you know, uh, indian data is no difference i have checked many times for last 18 okay. years okay. us is no no better than india in 1990 also okay so so that means we are but doing well but in india Malawi, yeah. our numbers are you know your small decimal changes will altered huge numbers yeah. because we have 1.2 billion people they have uh, you know their one, population one, is very one, less, less. so our you know today our prevalence is 0.3 if you add 0.4 our numbers are huge yeah. now, that's the way we have to look at there small like the millions of this poor implementation of like distributing the medicine we won't say poor implementation poor. but uh, reducing focus on prevention focus on prevention and also better therapies better so, acceptable better. New, newer treatment for hiv infected people is lacking in the national program So if I could just say on prevention we you know I've been doing HIV care for 30 years and hearing about prevention of HIV and it was always education and use a condom and be careful and none of that made any difference at all ever and now we have prevention that works which is medicine by yeah. medical prevention and so it, I think India should be using it so what is prevention has happened is because of treatment in a hiv positive uh, yeah, uh, person if in a family if one is infected you are treated that person that person is not transmitted to wife so you prevent or a sex worker you treated she has not transmitted to many of the clients which are or at least 100 200 of them coming to her in a year's time so that way we have prevented hiv through treatment earlier yeah. prevention was also important through condom promotion etc so It now work, now we need to do go again Talk to young people. Talk to vulnerable population. With after the repeal of 377, huge activities are happening in. in my, my clinic is on a, at a place called Grand Road in Mumbai. On the same road, I never knew that there is a theatre which is only for gay people. So I asked uh, the person, "Where do you encounter?" He said, "I have here 500 partners." So are you joking? He said, "No, I have." So where do you get? Where do you encounter? No, no, they, you don't need anywhere. The theatre, which theatre? This theatre. I said this theater is just one third kilometer from my clinic. I didn't know, so I said, "How do you do in theater?" He said, "Sir, male female sex, you need a room for male male sex. You don't need anything. Movie is going on, activity is going on. So a lot of things are now <laughs> happening this way. So I com- uh, communicated to that fellow. I said, 'Prep has come.' He said, 'Didn't you prep? He didn't you PP in you?' So they conducted a program for gay community for prep, and I went there and I talked to them. They were Two, three doctors. There are two, three IITs. One council general, councilor from some country. They are all educated people. Nobody knew prep. And government of India prep is not yet program. Is not in government program. And PP is also for professional uh, post exposure prophylaxis. That post exposure prophylaxis in government of India domain is only for those people which are professional like doctors, nurses, technician who got needle prick with HIV or something. They should be protected. Maybe we will explain. No, somebody. Who is working in the healthcare setting? If they have a needle stick injury, they can get HIV. You know, from the if, if the needle is chances are less. Used in a, you know, there is a chance. But we have got certain drugs which is given within two hours, preferably before seventy-two hours for twenty-eight days. We can make sure that that person won't develop the disease. It's called PET. So currently in India, it is provided only for healthcare setting, but can also be given for rape and as well as for some casual sex. Somebody without knowing they had sex. Oh, now what happened? We do not know the other person has got. They can take this PEP. It is what is called non-occupational PEP. Right. So that's something which is not implemented in India. There is one other thing which I was telling. What is called pre- pre-exposure. By knowing they are going to have a sex, but before a sex they can swallow the PEP. Mm-hmm. And if the drug level is present in that particular person, 
and if they are exposed to the virus, they will not occur. That is based on a research. There are a lot of new research that happen in that, both as a tablet as well as as an injection. Now, tomorrow we'll have a lot of discussions here at the conference on that. It's something what India should go forward. Because now India is not able to contain HIV in certain population, as well as we are not able to reach certain populations. Yeah, yeah the population, you know, and also, you know, people are not coming up for testing or anything. Where can you have other things? Uh, so the problems are of lower people, problem of higher people. There are chem sex, you know, chemical sex or rare parties where they know that they are going to take drug and going to have sex with anyone. Sometimes two, three, uh, you know, one particular night in common. But, but don't think that in India, this is all happening only in the lowest society. It's happening the highest yeah, Because we, you know, you know, you know, you all know me. Sex right? is a practice practice. In Apex Center, Walter, EHS Hospital. You know, I heard that yeah, all types of patients come, you know, coming and walking is not just a rickshaw bullets to top the film personality to politics. Everybody comes there. They come in different hours, different times, and they come into the hospital. So don't think that this is present only in the low, you know, we have all, especially today, the new way we are seeing in our clinic is young MSM, HIV positive, mainly from the top IT sector, from the high socioeconomic status. So there are, and some of them are married. They already are married, they have uh, you know, female spouse, but still they have male partner. And uh, you know, coming to us with the you know, because HIV. of social structure, they don't declare that they are going to be anything 30, from uh, 30, 18 40, years to 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 60. Yeah, that's what from 18 onwards. And I have, I have 17 year old uh, MSM, you know, 12th grade student found positive. And I told them, you bring your partner also, we tested, he's also positive. Then we are trying to change a uh, track is linked how they had acquired uh, in all those. You know, they had contacted with uh, somebody from the IT guy. You know, he works in one of the top companies here, right? Then we are trying to try. We can go to only a certain level because of the stigma. So we do one-to-one -one counsel. Okay, now we are transmitted. Now we have treatment available. If we can identify that person who transmit, we can save his life. Otherwise, he's going to die or he may transmit. We try to bring them. So we are able to track. Some people are negative in that whatever they had. You know, so they had multiple partners. So that means it's gone beyond. And those people are, some of them are married. They have women, women uh, spouse. So they would have been infected. We do not know, sorry to say, that that woman's spouse would have got unprotected sex with somebody else. That's the way the, you know, the HIV is, you know, not just in the risky population, it's already gone to the general population. It's a new wave now coming up here in the cities. So in the US, they call it as hotspots. In India, we have not named them. Probably we need to use similar strategies, especially yeah. in Mumbai, in Chennai. And this one happening in sex. Another one thing happening is among injecting drug use. It is historically happening a lot in Northeast, Manipur, uh, Nagaland, but now new way coming up in Punjab, Punjab in Northeast, Haryana. Haryana, because of a lot of drug traffic. So in this, they acquire not only HIV, but also hepatitis C is another thing. In Chennai also, we have a large group of injecting drug users, so small communities. You'll never know where they are. If we can't call large numbers, might be around 5,000 injecting drug users, uh, you know, in the community, you know, so, uh, and, uh, you know, there are a few percentage are HIV positive and uh, 30 to 40 percent are hepatitis C positive. Oh. But I'm country. assuming that's illegal in India, right? So that's another course, reason that people don't want to tell outside. Uh, like here, if you say you are injecting, yeah. they'll put in jail. So it's illegal, right? You yeah. know, drug use. So. So, so, so I think I think these are the other wave next week. Earlier, we are talking about only about sex from the commercial sex worker, right? And lorry drivers in the... Now that wave is changed. So they have a lot of uh, awareness. They are protecting themselves and protecting others. But the new wave is in this type of population. I think if India doesn't show these uh, efforts on this to contain, we'll have a different wave of but HIV exposure. It's all come down now. Earlier, there used a town called Namakal, you know, where 50% uh, oh, of the people are uh, HIV positive. You know, they are all in the trucker's business. We had a town. So, large number of uh, people. They used to come in a bus. Uh, you know, they hire a private bus, come to our center for treatment. So, because they are all in the same uh, village, like uh, 30, 40 people, they'll hire a bus and uh, they come. Truck drivers, a lorry driver? Yeah. Don't and their sure. families. Yeah. So, but those things are changing. You know, now... Uh, we have a. You were talking of migrants, and we have a question from Padamra Joshi, who is editor of Health Today from Nepal. In fact, he was there online listening to this, but he had to go suddenly somewhere. So he has sent his question, uh, a recording of his question. Uh, he, as I said, he's Padamra Joshi, editor of Health Today Nepal. 
and he's a board member of Asia Pacific Regional Media Network uh, for to end tobacco and TB and to prevent NCDs. There is a Asia Pacific Media Network, so he's a board member of that. So I'll just play the question yeah. which he has said. Good afternoon. I am Padam Prakash Joshi from Kathmandu, Nepal. I am a health journalist. I want to ask some questions about the cross-border issue of HIV. Nepal and India have open borders. Thousands of Nepalis go to India city like Mumbai, Delhi, Calcutta, etc. for job. They carry HIV from there. Of the total HIV infected people in Nepal, 40% have returned from India. So, how can we solve the problem of HIV that is returning from India for a labor migrant due to open border? Okay, uh, I will, uh, Mr. Joshi, I would like to reply to you that similar question was raised about 20 years back when a number of sex workers returning from India, which were Nepali origin, were going back and they were HIV infected. And that time, the blame was on India that India is sending HIV positive people back to Nepal. And in a simple way, I told them that you send sex workers from Nepal to India and we are returning them with interest. But that was a kind of a jocular reply. But this kind of open border or closed border thing will happen. So if there are Nepali sex workers coming, to India for some reason or by uh, they were trafficked or for forced prostitution and they were uh, re rescued from Mumbai and sent back to Nepal, 20, 30, 40 percent of them were HIV infected. Same situation is now with uh, manual labor or uh, uh, lower class labor. So if there are a lot of people coming from Nepal to India for uh, labor, they will be just like Bihar or Orissa or other places from where they are coming and going back uh, with their infections. So similar issues we faced with UP and Bihar and we told them that we should have a campaign for the returning people, whether they're going temporarily for holiday or going back for permanently. That you carry good memories of Mumbai, good memories of uh, Chennai, or good mithai or good sweets or good uh, ornament from here, but don't carry HIV. But if you are carrying, please report to this reception center, get yourself checked. And we suggested to UP government that during the summer and during uh, the uh, sowing season, a lot of UP people from uh, Maharashtra go to UP and there are special trains. So you create reception centers at different stations and ask them to get tested for HIV, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, HIV, or VDRL and do intervention. So that is the only way we can tackle those problems rather than blaming us and we blaming them. So if the people coming from India to Nepal, you ask them to get themselves checked for you don't say HIV because HIV has a stigma. Uh, you are coming back from Mumbai, so get your health check done. In the health check, there are triple S, that is HIV, hepatitis C, hepatitis B, and syphilis uh, for VDRL test. Once that is done, if they are found positive, they link them to the treatment. Okay. And most important is if those which are hepatitis B negative, they can be prevented from hepatitis B for lifetime by taking three simple shots of hepatitis B at the interval of one month. And that is not very expensive, not even costing 100 rupees. So, and hepatitis B is 100 times more transmissible than HIV. So, if somebody is having, having HIV and hepatitis B also, the chances of hepatitis B transmission are much higher. And that is completely vaccine preventable. All children born after 2008 in India, they are vaccinated against hepatitis B along with polio triple. But adults are not vaccinated. So, the concept in minds of people is that vaccine is only for children, it is not for adults. So, we have also one session on adult vaccination uh, in our conference. Oh, we can. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we'll yeah, yeah, sure. we'll give you a copy of that, and you are welcome to come next three days. Yeah. We have fifteen international faculty. Many of them are involved in the discovery now, do the latest research, the right guidelines, and everything from US and UK, and as well as from Europe. They are all here. You can have one-to-one -one, uh, interaction with them, get some insight from what is really happening. You know. Yeah. So, and and this is the national conference. It's an opportunity in Chennai. First time in Chennai. Of course, we. Uh, this is a 12th national conference, but the one what we do, I do here is what is called COT, Chennai at the Symposium, which some of you come and write that. That we do, uh, we have done 25 years till last year.
But this year, this is in collaboration with uh, ACCON. We are not doing that separately. It's an association with the NIC. Society of India. India, India. Uh, National Conference. conference. Ah, it's called Con the National Conference of AIDS Society of India. AIDS yes. Society of India Conference. AC Con. Now we have like pediatrics, pedic, pedic con, you know. Yeah, no, we'll give you. I uh, uh, they will give you, uh, he will send you, and when you are coming tomorrow, you, they will register as media. You will be there for us for all three days. You have that media for you. You are from the Times of India. Yeah, the thing is, times a lot of other people also keep meeting, you know. So, yeah, yeah. thank you very much, and thank you, the panelists and experts. And we hope to learn much more during the next three coming three days. Thank you.